Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. You know, when I started this channel, I originally talked about great runs of comics. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to show people who didn't know that those great runs were out there that these are the quality of comics that we should have today. And my tagline at the end of those videos was, make comics better by reading better comics. And I truly believe that that is a way to make comics better. So I want to do a little bit of that again today, but I'm going to do it in a different context. I'm going to talk about some great runs, but in contrast to Marvel and its storytelling today. Because something happened over the summer, which I'm sure most of you are aware of, that I would say put the last nail in the coffin of any good storytelling at Marvel. And if you can't have good storytelling, you can't have great storytelling. And the thing is, the weird thing is that the thing that has put the last nail in the coffin of good storytelling at Marvel is something that has to do with the publishing, not something that actually directly has to do with the writers or their agenda. And the thing that Marvel did was they said, or they indicated, that they were no longer going to tell you whether or not a series was an actual series or if it was just a miniseries. Because, you know, back in the 90s, even the 80s, when they put out a miniseries, it said on the cover, being number one of 12 or two of four. And they still do that at DC. And then in the 2000s, although Marvel stopped putting it on the cover, if you went to the title page, you could still see it in the small print saying number three of four or whatever number it was of a miniseries, and you could tell. But Marvel has since stopped doing that, and the reason why they have stopped doing that is because they simply need to save face. People have been saying, look, these characters are so poor that you can't even keep them going for X number of comics. You have to cancel them again and again and again, obviously get rid of them. And Marvel is trying to save face by saying, no, no, this was intended to be a mini series from the beginning. We didn't actually cancel it. So this is number seven and we intended to stop at number seven or this is number 13 and we intended to stop at 13 or this is number 36 and we intended to stop at 36. This is not actually being canceled. We are just coming to the end of this mini series, which we always intended it to be, which again is a straight up lie and just a way for them to try and save face, which is ruining everything for their comics and especially the storytelling and the reason why it ruins it is because one of the essential things for storytelling is you need confinement your story needs to be confined by certain parameters and those parameters need to be defined and the thing is that one of the easiest ways to do it is to confine something in a specific place but it doesn't always need to be, as you'll see by the examples that I'm going to give you. Now, confinement works in a very almost elastic way, I would say. You can do it in a number of ways. And if you want a quick idea of what I'm talking about right off the top of your head, think about the first Die Hard movie, where they're stuck in the building. And all of the story takes place within the building, except for the very first. And so that's a confinement of place. And it helps define the story, and it helps define the rules of the story so that you can concentrate on the story and push character development. That's what happens in these stories. So my example for comics, now one of the really best examples that I can think of is Craven's Last Hunt. All right, so... If you look at Craven's Last Hunt, it is basically a six-issue miniseries, but it went through three different Spider-Man titles. And it just came out as if it was a series within these three series of Spider-Man comics that were out at the time. And the confinement of that story was within the characters itself. So this was beautiful storytelling. This is masterful storytelling, just because... For people who are trying to use confinement to define their characters, usually they need an external confinement factor. But this story really didn't. Its confinement is within the minds of each Spider-Man, Craven, and Vermin. And these three characters and their juxtaposition of the way that they think and how they are trying to outsmart each other or basically kill each other is a way to drive forward the character development certainly for Spider-Man, but for those other smaller characters as well. And if you were not around for Craven's Last Hunt, this fundamentally changed the way people looked at Spider-Man. He became a much darker character, even though for a long time he had shed his high school persona and had become an adult. At this point, he had become someone who was 
much darker as an adult, someone who was much, much deeper, because that story concentrated on the psychological aspects of building the character of Peter Parker. And that confinement within his own mind, and that was played off by the confinement within the minds of the two villains, was something that, again, as I say, was beautiful, masterful storytelling that allowed the character to be developed in a way that was never done before and had a significant impact on the character, certainly for a great while after those comics came out. And the second one that I want to look at, a psychological story like Craven's Last Hunt, but was also confined within its own world, would be a stretch of The Incredible Hulk from 1985-1986. And I'm going to give you these in the background. And it was funny, because when I got back into comics, because I completely missed World War Hulk, and I completely missed the things that led up to it, where he was in the other world, and was a gladiator and all this, when I learned that those storylines were out there, I said to myself, Really? They did that storyline again? Because I remember that storyline from these 1985 Incredible Hulk, where the Incredible Hulk went into this other world where he was not the strongest, and he had to fight as if he was just a regular hero. And the thing was, with this storyline, although I don't particularly like the way that it ended, it was a beautiful storyline, and it developed Bruce Banner into something that affects him even to this day. It is the storyline that tied down the fact that the pain that Bruce Banner feels that can turn him into the Hulk is primarily psychological, not just physical. And this is a story element of the Hulk that stretches even to today. If you look at the first Hulk movie, the really bad one that came out a long while ago, that was the basic plot behind its story. And there were even some callbacks to this storyline in some of the visuals that were given. So this confinement within this place this confinement within this other world for the Hulk, a place where he was not the strongest, where he could not actually get out of this problem, get out of this situation by being the strongest, helped confine the Hulk into a defined set of parameters, which then allowed people to say, okay, he's in a precarious position, and he knows he's in a precarious position, therefore he is undergoing some character development. And it was psychological character development. And again, beautiful storyline. If you have the chance, go look it up. And also, just a quick note, this was the second time they had done this for the Hulk. They had done this, putting Hulk into another world like this, in an earlier version of the Hulk, which you may not actually be able to find because it originally was in the newspaper run of the Hulk, because at one time, in the funny pages, they used to have comic book characters. And Hulk had his own three, four panel comic strip in the newspapers and it was independent from the comics and they did a similar storyline where they shrunk Hulk down to a miniature size and he found this civilization where he went through a lot of the things which he went through in that story which is prior to World War Hulk. So if you can ever find that as well that's a great story. Which also leads into my next story which is a great story of confinement and it's one from DC this time and it's Sword of the Atom. Now, if you don't know about Sword of the Atom, this is a beautiful series. It's got beautiful Gil Kane art. It originally started as a miniseries, went into a second miniseries. There were a bunch of specials. But what happened with Sword of the Atom was, just like I was talking about Hulk, the Atom got shrunk down to a smaller size. He found this civilization of people that was hidden away that were miniature people, and the storyline basically would be described, I would say, as you had the Atom becoming a hero like John Carter, Warlord of Mars. And it confined him in this area. It confined him in this world. And unlike the other characters that were being developed that I talked about, like Hulk and like Spider-Man, this is a storyline that helped redefine who the Atom was. Because the Atom was a character prior to that that really didn't have any basis. He kept on showing up in other comics like Justice League and a lot of different smaller cameos and other comics. But the time of an actual Atom comic and people understanding the origin of the Atom was something that was far distant at that time. And so they helped redefine the character for a modern audience in this batch of miniseries and specials and made him into a hero in this confined setting because he had to literally become a hero who fought with sword in hand in order to defend this civilization which he had become a part of. And again, 
it helped redefine the hero aspect of that superhero and then after that he was brought back into the main DC continuity so to speak and so people had something to latch on to to understand where the nature of the heroics of the Atom came from and again it was something that was possible through confining him into this miniature world he had to be removed from the main universe of DC and put into this tiny world of these small tiny people and when that was done he was able to develop as a character now the last one that I want to talk about is a massive series compared to the other ones and it is Rom the Space Knight that is the old Rom the Space Knight done by Marvel in the 80s and this had a very unique confinement I would say and it's something that helped define this character but in the end it kind of killed it at the same time because it was so long because it was more than 50 issues and the confinement for this character was the confinement of the enemy he always fought one enemy all the time he went all through the Marvel Universe and he fought with a lot of different Marvel characters at his side but he was always except for a couple of very short interludes fighting one specific kind of enemy and that was the dire rates and again this is a storyline which just got parroted into the late 90s early 2000s comics where they had the invasion of the scrolls this was just again a rehashing of this old rom storyline because you had the dire rates and they were an intergalactic race which had lost their home world and were looking for a new home world to inhabit and they picked the earth and since they were shapeshifters who used both magic and technology they were very good at both taking over things and hiding and no one actually knew that they were there and it took Rom coming to the planet and showing all these heroes that they were there for them to actually begin to take notice of what was going on there are some elements to this story which I would say is probably pretty dated but at the same time it's a beautiful story it is a massive story as well like I said over 50 issues him fighting the dire wraiths to try to stop this invasion of earth and it is one of the best series from that era that is overlooked way too much if you're looking for an actual series not just a mini series of great comics that you can pick up probably for only a couple of dollars each because no one really thinks of Rom as being a great series and they're not going to put the price up on those books go look for that because that was a great series but as I said it's the confinement of this one enemy he always fought this one enemy and again it was something that confined his character to a specific set of parameters where he had to act within and that way they got to throw in a whole bunch of other characters from the Marvel Universe and bring them into this storyline at the same time and it certainly helped develop that character because Rom wasn't a character before that book it was just a toy it was just an action figure that was it it had no real backstory at all but this concentration on this enemy was a story that allowed for a development of this character as an actual hero and got people to actually view this character as a character not just as an action figure that I saw one time now what are the common elements of all of these great stories that is missing in Marvel well the thing is again it is confinement since with Marvel they have now decided that there is an escape hatch for every story there's an escape hatch for every comic so that if a comic isn't doing well they're just going to cancel it they don't have to wait for an end of a story arc they don't have to wait for something else to happen that is happening within the universe itself to prompt it they're just going to say we're going to stop now we're going to reboot the entire series this is an escape hatch for them so that they can save face but it is an escape hatch that destroys all good storytelling because if you'll note in all of those other stories that I talked about there is a building up of the character by use of that confinement and when you have an escape hatch to something there is no confinement there is no confinement of that character within either a place within either a mental state within either a selected villain even 
There is no confinement. And the way that you tell a good story is that you need to build up your drama. You need to start from a simple point where you explain the rules. And again, that's what your confinement stories are really good at. It's confining them within a specific set of rules. So you start off by defining the rules and your reader should actually be engaged by trying to learn the rules. And once they learn the rules, then you start to play with the character and actually flush him out according to those rules. And again, according to those rules means confinement. That is to say, under those rules. And again, this is a way to build tension. You say, you know what the rules are. You know that this is going to happen. You know that since your hero is in this spot, this is building tension because he's going to run up against the rules, whether it be an enemy, whether it be I can't get out of this world, whether it be I have this psychological block within my mind that I can't get over. Those rules exist so that you know the closer they get to the edge of those rules, the more tension you're going to build with your story. But with a story that always has an escape hatch, there is no way to build tension. It's like trying to pump air into a tire when there's a giant hole in the side. It doesn't work. There is no pressure buildup. You can't build up pressure, therefore you can't build up tension, therefore there is never a good story. And that's what happens with all of these stories with Marvel today. And it certainly happens with their new characters. This is part of the reason why none of their new characters can actually develop into heroes. Because there is no pressure on them. And this is one of the reasons, not the entire reason I would certainly say, that there is no pressure on these heroes. You have San Aminat and G. Willow Wilson saying, Oh, we developed Kamala Khan so that she doesn't actually have a pathos. She doesn't actually have a moment where she was put under pressure and then became a hero through the crucible of that pressure. That never actually happens. And they are proud of the fact and publish the fact that this is specifically what they did with this character. And this flies in the face of any good storytelling. And it's not that they are simply unaware of this. They're just thumbing their nose at this and saying, we don't need to use this traditional storytelling. See, look, we can make a character without it. Yes, certainly you can make a quote-unquote character without it, but it's a bland character that no one feels for and no one cares for because they, first of all, don't understand why in the world their character is a hero, and secondly, they know that there's always an escape hatch for this character and they can just get out of anything because if there's no reason for them to fight, then if they're in the middle of a fight and it gets to be too hairy for them, they can just say, I'm out of this, I'm done. I'm walking away. And there's nothing to stop them from doing that. And therefore, these characters, again, I won't call them heroes because they're not heroes, especially these new characters that Marvel puts out. They don't have a pathos. They're not heroes. There's no reason for them to be a hero. Therefore, they're just characters that random things happen to. And the fact that they are exposing themselves to this danger of being a hero when there is zero reason for them to actually do so breaks any idea of them being a hero or any idea of tension. And as I said, that little trick of publishing that Marvel has now pulled has taken that escape hatch that they built into all of their new characters and just made it institutional, as it were, so that every series and every comic and every character has an escape hatch and therefore no pressure can be built up and you can't have a good story and you can't have a great story like the ones I just referenced and you can't have any actual deep character development. So hopefully I've given you something new to think about. I've given you some great comic runs that you might want to look up so that you can read better comics and make comics better by reading better comics. If I did, hit like. Hit the shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of these old comic runs and if there's any that you think I should put on my list to talk about in the future. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.